flu season is not easing its grip on much of the United States, and the outbreak is reaching levels not seen in nearly a decade. Hospitalizations for it are higher than normal, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported today that roughly one in 13 visits to the doctor last week were for flu-like symptoms. It has also claimed the lives of at least 10 more children this week, putting that number at 63 for the season. Tens of thousands of deaths are often associated with a flu annually. Dr. Ann Shuckett is the acting director of the CDC, and she joins me now. Dr. Shuckett, welcome back to the program. So how widespread is the flu right now in this country? This is a very difficult flu season, and, and this past week we got more bad news. The doctor's visits for flu are as high this week as we've seen during the peak of the 2009 pandemic. We're not having a pandemic right now, but we have a very, very difficult flu season. Why is it so bad this year? Well, there are a couple reasons that we know of, and there are probably some more reasons that we need to learn about. Uh, one thing is that it's an H3N2 influenza season. That's the strain that's dominating. There are a couple other strains circulating. H3N2 seasons tend to be more severe. Um, the other thing is that the influenza vaccine doesn't work as well against H3N2 strains. So that's probably a second factor. And a third factor is that the vaccine is probably working even less well than usual against the H3N2s. We had an early start to the season and it's continuing full force right now. Are there particular parts of our population that are more vulnerable than others? You know, anyone can get the flu and it can be serious, but the people who have a harder time with flu are the very old, the very young, pregnant women, and people with heart disease, lung disease, other uh, medical conditions that can make it harder for them to um, take on a lung infection. Um, we recommend that those groups um, in particular, if they present with flu symptoms, they can benefit from antiviral medicines that may convert a relatively mild illness and uh, uh, it may prevent a milder illness um, from becoming a hospitalization or worse. Is there enough, Dr. Shuckett, is there enough vaccine available this year to prevent the flu or at least prevent it from being more severe? Is there enough of the, the drug Tamiflu, which I know is prescribed for many people? More than 152 million doses of influenza vaccine have been distributed um, and the coverage is about overall about what we saw last year uh, in terms of how many people have gotten vaccinated by this time in the year. It's not too late to be vaccinated for those who haven't already gotten vaccinated. There, there may be some benefit to still getting the vaccine. We're seeing more requests or prescriptions for Tamiflu or the other antivirals against influenza than we've seen in past years. There's a lot of demand for that because of the intense season. Um, it may be hard to find locally, so we expect that people may need to call around to the pharmacies. But the past couple weeks, we've been working closely with the manufacturers, the pharmacy chains, the insurers, the distributors to try to smooth out that supply to take care of those spot shortages. We do think that prompt treatment with anti antiviral medicines can be very important in people who present with severe symptoms or people who are at risk for uh, complications. So I have to ask you, what is your advice for people who have not had the flu uh, and for people who have it? Well, if, if you're feeling well, keep washing your hands, um, cover your cough or, or sneeze. And um, if you do get sick, please stay home from work or school so that you don't spread the flu. What's a mild illness for you could be something severe for one of your coworkers or your classmates. Um, if you have the flu and you are pregnant or elderly or have heart or lung disease, we hope that you're seeking medical care because prompt treatment with antivirals can be life-saving. Dr. Ann Shuckett, Acting Director of the CDC, we thank you. Thank you, Judy.